How's it going guys? This is part three of the K969 rebuild series. And in this video, I'm going to cover the uh, metal spur gears that you can get. Um, since I'm trying to swap everything out to metal um, and I'm running uh, metal rear differentials, uh, you, you really need to run uh, metal spur gears because like I, I said in the last video, is they, they will eat up the little plastic gears um, that come with the, the K969. So you can't really run these with metal diffs. So if you're gonna run plastic gears, you pretty much have to run the plastic differential that comes with the car. Uh, but if you wanna run a metal one, you're gonna have to swap out to a, uh, uh, a metal setup here with metal gears. So uh, there's a couple different options that I found out there. Um, the one I like the most is the one that's already installed here. These, uh, these I found, I think on AliExpress, pretty much like everything else I find. Uh, you probably won't be able to find them on Amazon or they might be on eBay. So you'd have to look around. Now these come with the, the same size um, drive shaft that comes with the uh, stock version. It's like I think a two millimeter uh, wide drive shaft. And it's, let's see if I can get this part. Yeah, it's got a little rectangle end here. And these little gears have the um, rectangle hole, and then you just gotta slide those on there. They're, they're friction fit, but you could put glue on there or something to help keep them from coming out if, if you wanna just have some extra security there. Um, and then these little gears that come with it, just slide over that. I'm coming with two different size gears. I think the 27 tooth and 29 tooth, like the stock uh, plastic ones, about the same thing. Pretty much this is the, the same thing as the stock plastic ones, just in metal. Um, so th this is for if you're running like uh, 102 millimeter size bodies or whatever. I don't use this one. This is just for demonstration right now. I use this one for the 98 millimeter bodies, the shorter gear. And then they have the other end. If you're running an all wheel drive setup, this would go on the other end, but I already cut this, uh, cut this one short to do uh, this little short drive shaft there for this one. Since I'm running a real drive setup, I don't need you know the drive shaft to go all the way to the front since there won't be a, a differential in the front. Um, so, but I don't want obviously a drive shaft going all the way through, so I have to cut it short. And as you can see, cut it short there. And that's really all you need to have it stick out. Like you can even maybe go a little bit shorter if you wanted, but I just did that just to have a little extra just in case. Um, but yeah. So it, it fits pretty good in there. Like originally I was trying to do it with the plastic housing and it, did, it seemed a little bit too snug where the plastic uh, was kind of rubbing on the gear. So I actually shaved this metal uh, gear a little bit um, and that kind of fixed that. but. Switching to this metal housing, because I'm, I'm pretty much gonna switch all this around in the back and redo the rear end suspension and everything with the metal housing. So I'm gonna talk about that in, a, in another video. But uh, switching to that, I actually, the, the gear, the way they come, uh, stock actually fits correctly. So uh, you don't need to actually sand that down or anything. I had to add a little, little washer in there to make up for what I sanded down, but it's fine now. So. Just a heads up, you don't, you shouldn't really need to modify it at all. Um, I think it was just because I had an old plastic one that was kind of off. So, I mean, if I used a brand new one, it might've worked fine. But this metal one, it definitely fits perfect. So if you're gonna use a metal housing and then a metal gear, that'll fit correctly. So I'm just giving you a heads up with that. All right. And there's the uh, second version that I found online here. Has a uh, three millimeter shaft. The only problem with that is that you can't run the bearing inside the uh, mounting here because there's a little bearing that goes in here that the uh, two millimeter drive shaft goes through. So, but this three millimeter shaft will go through the hole there almost perfectly. So you could do that, but you just, you have to buy a new type of uh, bearing that's got a bigger hole inside, but I don't know if they even make one that's got a three millimeter diameter inside with a five millimeter 
diameter on the outside. So that's something to be aware of. And I don't really like this one because the, uh, the little square peg here, so it's like square shaped that goes into these. It's, it's really loose, it doesn't, it doesn't hold on. So you, you need to glue these in there like really well because it'll just fall off like these. It's not friction fit at all. Like it'll just fall right off like that. So I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, see, it, it, it barely, it barely fits. It'll just fall off. So you would have to actually glue these, or even like weld it, or whatever you want to do if you want to make it permanent. Um, so this is a second option that's out there, but I'm not a huge fan of it, and I'm probably not going to run it. I'm just going to keep running the uh, the two millimeter drive shaft version that I found because uh, I would have to get another bearing. Because the only problem is, even though this fits like perfectly through that hole, when you put the gear on, let's see. These things are a pain. All right, so when you put this gear on, you can see it, it actually will seat all the way to where it's like the gear is flush with the mount here and you don't want that. It needs to be sitting right there. So you need something in there to stop it from going all the way back. And you would either need to find a bearing to fit in there or I'd have to like either 3D print something to put in there, but it also it needs to be smooth enough to where it could spin on there without being rough. So I would have to like put a piece of 3D print in there and put some little bit of like grease or lube on there to make sure that this has no problem spinning while making contact with that 3D print. It's just a lot of extra work and, and it's pretty stupid that I even have to do that. Like, you know, with the other version, I don't have to do that. You just use the same, the same stock bearing that came with the K969, goes in there, and then this drive shaft fits right in to that bearing and it stops right there like it's supposed to, as you can see in this one. Yeah. So, I mean, I have that little washer in there, but it's, it stops right at the bearing, and then that's the perfect distance to line up this gear inside here to get that bearing to sit there, and then have this gear line up with the motor, uh, little spur gear here. So, this, this is probably the better of the two options, but you do have another option if you're looking for a metal, metal spur gear metal spur gear out there so this is the other option but like i said i'm not a fan of it so i probably will never use this but i have it just in case um maybe i you know end up finding another bearing that i can put in there and maybe i'll give this a shot but i'm just not a fan of how easy it is for this thing to just fall right off so i have to glue this thing on or weld it on, like I said, and I don't really feel like doing that either, because just in case, what if I want to take it off, or because, you know, it's just, I like being able to like, press it on with friction and then be able to pull it back off again later if I want to work on it or change anything, so having to glue it on is not something that I, I want to do. So that's why I much rather use something that's friction fit, like this one, like it, it holds on nice and tight. Yeah, if I can get the line up. Yeah, and then I just like, press it down on the table and then it's it's on there, but like it will still come off too. But it's got enough friction to where it'll stay on um, while in use. So, and then once you, once you have the bearing and then you have this gear pressed in there too, then it, it really stays locked in, so. That's the better of the two options when it comes to the, uh, the metal spur gears. Um, so I'm gonna be running it with this, this metal differential, which like I said in the last video, I like this one over this other aftermarket one that you can get because of the teeth. Uh, just this one's higher quality. So I, I can't run the plastic stock stuff anymore, so. That won't be used. But the only other problem I have with, um, say, these housings that I got, I don't understand why. So the plastic and these metal aftermarket housings, for some reason, the bearings will not fit. 
So even if I push as hard as I can, I can't get it to like sit down inside there like it's supposed to. You can see that gap in the arch there. That's not supposed to be there. So it's like half of a millimeter uh, shorter in diameter than the bearing is. So I can't press it all the way in like it's supposed to. Um, so I'm gonna have to dremel out a little bit on this side and that side on the top and bottom of this housing to get these bearings in to fit the uh, differentials in. So yeah, it's like it won't, it won't seat all the way down in there like it's supposed to. So I thought maybe it was just a metal one at first and then this aftermarket um, plastic one that looks like an exact replacement has the same problem. So I don't know what's going on there because the ones that came with the K969, the bearings fit like they're supposed to, but on here, it's like, unless I press really hard and it starts to push, it starts to bow the plastic apart. So then when I try to like close it, I can't get it to close all the way. So I don't know what's going on there because it, it fit fine and I, I've tried putting this half on that half to see if they line up. And it looks like they do line up the same for some reason, but I just can't get these to, uh, to close. See. So it's pretty annoying. See how it rocks back and forth. Like I can't get it to, to sit flush even if I push as hard as I can. So that's not how it's supposed to be. Um, so that's something to be aware of. If you get any of these new housings, like aftermarket ones, even though they might look exactly the same as like the stock ones, the bearings uh, won't fit correctly in there. And you're gonna have to shave some material away on the top and bottom of the housings. So you have to shave a little bit off here and here to get it to sit all the way down inside. And I didn't, I mean, I, I didn't have to do that with the ones that were in the stock setup. So I don't know what's going on with that. Even though they look exactly the same, they seem like when I lined up the uh, arches, it seemed like the distance was the same, but I could, you know, close these up. I mean, this one's all beat up from what I did to it, but it closes and drops in like it's supposed to. Like, uh, I don't get it. So keep that in mind if you order any of these housings that the bearings might not sit inside them correctly and you might have to shave away some material which is annoying, shouldn't have to do that. But like most of these little aftermarket parts from China or different manufacturers or whatever, you know, of course, nothing's really ever gonna line up the way you want it to, and it's just extra work that you're gonna have to do that you shouldn't have to do, but you know, if you've already bought it and spent the money on it and you, and you want it to work, you're gonna have to do the extra work, so. I'm not happy that I have to Dremel this out. I'm gonna have to just use my Dremel and shave a little bit of material here and here on both sides, on the top and bottom, and then get those bearings to sit all the way down inside. Just that, that just sucks. Like, it's more work that I shouldn't have to be doing. But I really wanna use this metal housing, because it, it's, it's better than using the plastic, to be honest, if you can get everything to work correctly. Like, everything is more rigid, you know, uh, more durable, so I would much rather have the metal back here than these plastic ones. Even though some of the plastic is nice if you're trying to make changes and, and you want to shave down some of the material here and there, it's a lot easier to work on the plastic, obviously, to shave off with a razor knife than having to Dremel any of this stuff, you know, because it's metal, so it's pretty solid, so it's a little bit more uh, tedious work to do with the metal, but I want to just get this done and then be done with it. So I'm gonna just do it with the metal this time. And because I've already pretty much, like, a, like you can see, beat up the stock plastic ones. I mean, it's barely holding on by a thread in a lot of the areas here. So I wanna replace this with something better and I was hoping the metal would be it, but um, I'm just not happy that I have to shave away material to make room for these little bearings. So, yeah. but I guess that's part of the hobby, right? So, and I had the same with this thing. Um, I had to shave away some material on this mount. Uh, mainly I had to shave away material here for the uh, side body clips for the body. It was uh, making the body push out like a millimeter or two further on, on this side than it was on the other side. So I had to shave off about a millimeter or two of material here. Um, 
and then I actually went a little bit too far, so I used a little spacer to bring it back out a millimeter to make it in line with this clip. So that was annoying. And then I was trying some different types of gears that I was putting on the motor before, so I had to dremel out a lot of material around that area to make room for it. But I ended up just going back to the stock little metal thing, and this, this gear was very difficult to get off of the uh, stock brushed motor, so keep that in mind. If you wanna get this thing off, man, get ready. Get ready for a fun ride, because getting that off without like destroying the shaft and everything was, was uh, definitely a pain. Like, you know, I mean, I don't even know if there's really a good tool to do it, because um, there are those little bearing puller, or not bearing, but um, little spur gear uh, tools that you can use to, to get it off. But it, like the plastic ones won't be strong enough to get this metal off the metal shaft. Um, so you're gonna have to use like, you know, pliers or needle nose or whatever to get that thing off without just destroying everything. So keep that in mind if you want to reuse this and put it on a different motor that it's going to be really difficult to get this off. So you might even be better just buying uh, spare ones, you know, from AliExpress or wherever you can get these and just get and just leaving the one on the stock brush motor and don't even mess with it and just get some new ones. Uh, but I didn't have any around at the time and I didn't feel like waiting another you know few weeks to get one. So I, you know busted my ass to get this one off and then I just uh, pressed it on with friction and it's, it's on there pretty good right now but it's not on there as tight as it was on the uh, brush motor. So yeah those are a couple things uh, to keep in mind if you're gonna do any of this kind of uh, upgrading. Um, uh, in the next video I will probably go over the uh, extended CVDs that I have to use to reach um, like this differential and stuff and probably go over the swing arms so these metal swing arms are different than the plastic ones um, the plastic ones are good but they're not that great I'd rather use metal and these these ones that you find out there are trash they're not good they don't give you a lot of range of motion so I wouldn't recommend using these but these I found are the new versions basically of these to where they have this tiny little ball heads in here already but their range of motion is short too so I have to dremel out a little bit of material there so they can actually lean back a little bit further but it's better than having this one where you put the screw through it and uh, the screw head is sticking down and you know that would be hitting the ground and stuff and they don't have a lot of range of motion so I would have to do a lot of dremel work too to get this to, to move freely so these uh, I would not recommend using these might be a good option so I guess wait till after I dremel them and let's see how they work out Otherwise, I'm gonna have to keep using these plastic ones. So I'll talk about that more in the next video when it comes to the swing arms, the upper or the lower swing arms and the, uh, the CVDs and stuff. So I'll talk about that in part four. So uh, once again, thank you for your time and uh, I'll see you in the next part.